Right. Sorry, well, I'm, I'm taking... Yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, what we will do is just because we are running on a strict schedule of times and we still have a lot of station to go through. We usually <laughs> run this, this course on a two days course and it's a two days full day course. Like we start from eight till six and we do go through this in a very detailed manner. So what we will do now, we will run a scenario, a demonstration for you. And what we will do as a group of faculty, we will basically show you, demonstrate to you how, when there's unwell patients, how we actually manage it. It might... <coughs> so what we will do at the end of that station, we will try to have feedback from everyone. So if I may ask uh, the front, those who are sitting in front, if you guys step back a little bit, it's just because of the, the space in there, if you don't mind, I'm sorry. Um, Well, <laughs> 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 پنج منیت تو یکی به شش بود دمنت. من جا قهری او نه که هم نخواهد دید. انتظار یوری یور می‌دانم. You are going to decide this is dead. لاتش نو دقیقه بچه لاتش ساعتی کنیو یا دو ساعتی شیپی بچه. من جا یور من که بچیه که هم هر گی می‌دانم بو. بیکارن چی؟ اولان که تی دانم بو تو پاسیف. You have how you are going to reorm the hypothermia by passive reorming and active reorming. Okay, good. And you will not decide the hypothermic patient is dead until you are going to rewarm the patient and decide the patient is warm and you are going to announce the death of the patient. You are going to continue for 90 minutes, okay? And also another scenario if there is the patient already got thrombolytic agent and if you suspect the cause of the, uh, stro uh, the arrest is pulmonary embolism. How are you going to diagnose pulmonary embolism? Like at your resta? It is very difficult because the golden standard for diagnosis of pulmonary embolism is city pulmonary angiography, which cannot do it on the table of the bed with the arrested patient. I bet you confirm, okay? Yes, clinical criteria and also ECG, 12 lead ECG may support you. What do you find in the toll? جاری وای به ساین استاد کردیم. اما الان نخوشه که آرسته. یه این نخوشه که ویل رکوگنایز ریت میه. اما الان خوی آرسته. This is regarding the which type of the arrest if you find well organized rhythm and there is no pulse. Which is what is the scenario? Excellent. Pulse less equal activity. So we're going to do a demonstration. So I'll ask from the faculty, Dr. Salim, Dr. Nuffin. Dr. Faraz to contribute to the stations. So all we will do, we will run, and Dr. Aziz is currently volunteers to basically run the scenario for us, and I'll basically give him uh, so, some of the information. Come here, Dr. Aziz. Thank you, I put my hands on. Yes, so Dr. Aziz, he's a junior doctor, he's working in the AE department, okay? And we've got Kaga Hammer, Kaga Hammer, he's just, he's a builder, he, he was working this morning, he was went out, and he was complaining about chest pain. Kaka Hammer, he's about 60 years old. He's, he has history of hypertension. Uh, other than that, he's been reasonably well. But since morning, he's been feeling a bit chest high. And he come to AE and he's a bit uncomfortable. And the nurse has asked you if you could actually assess Kaka Hammer. At the moment, you are on your own. Yeah. You've got a team who will help you when you ask them to, when you call them and they will help you as you direct them to, to do so. Okay, thank you. So, it's uh, Kaka Hama, 65, yeah. in any with chest pain this morning, yeah. and uh, asked me to review yes. uh, him now. Yeah. Okay. Right, safety approach? It's safety approach. Okay. Kaka Hama? Oi! Oi! How are you, Kaka Hama? What's happening? Um, Oh, my chest is hurting, doctor. Some okay. sorry, yes, yeah. How long do you have this chest pain for? Uh, the pain you are. Dr. Jason Walker, help me, doctor. Okay. Uh, and have you taken anything? Uh, no. 
بس فارس سولم خواهی چیز فاضی نبود اوکی آیا الرژیک تو این مدیکیشنز؟ نو اوکی آی تیک این مدیکیشنز ویگیلالی؟ آی تیک هایپتنس اف مدیکیشن اوکی What I do, I'll probably, uh, his uh, airway is fine, he's talking to me, and he's uh, free. I'm going to start, I'm, I'm going to give you some oxygen to breathe, uh, Kako, okay? Okay, help me, doctor, please. Thank you. I'm not doing well. Okay, there's some oxygen, well done. Okay, I'm going to put a small needle in the back of the hand, and give you some painkillers, okay? Okay. Kaka, how much more to add? Are you okay, Kaka? Kaka. I'm very... Okay. Oh. As needle is in, okay? I'm going to give you some painkillers now. Okay? Uh, what do you like to give him? I'm going to give him some morphine, two milligrams boluses. I'm giving him oxygen. I'm going to give him... Uh, I'm suspecting acute coronary syndrome. I'm going to give him aspirin, 300 milligrams. Oh. Okay? I'll give... Doctor, help me, please. Uh, okay, so that's some morphine. I'll give you some tablets now, okay? Uh, you can start to chew it, okay? Don't swallow it. And as you assessing, um, you are about to put, give him the aspirin. Kakahama has become unresponsive. Kakahama is the pain is better. Kakahama is not responding to you. Kakahama is the pain better. You okay? So he's not responding. I'm calling for help. Can somebody help me, please? Uh, okay. You got no friend. He's an, he's an experienced nurse in any. Okay. Right, so I'm going to assess his breathing. Okay. So, look, listen, and feel for 10 seconds. One, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and ten. There's no breathing. sign of breathing. Okay. There's no circulation. Sister, no circulation. Can you call? Two 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 cardiac arrest. Okay, I'm going to start some resuscitation. So I'm putting my hand in the upper third. Okay, I'm going to put my hand in the upper third of the sternum. Upper third and do. Yes, we are here. Resuscitation team here. One and two and three and four. It's going to get ages. And five. Six, seven, and eight. Do you have a team here? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you've got, okay. got people arriving. Hello, Fred, can you? Hello, I'm Dr. Sadiq. Cardiac arrest team. Hello, Dr. Sadiq. What yes. Can you? This is a 65 years old okay. age. He came in with chest pain, and he arrested while giving him some medication for acute coronary syndrome. Dr. Nofred secured the airway. Can you secure an... Uh, uh, the okay. monitoring. Good. I have to take a blood as well. Okay. And if we can connect. I'm going to contact your training DCG with the adhesive pass. Oh, yeah, the one, pass piece, one yes. in the fixed speed and the other one on the right. Let's him now. Okay. Okay. So and we can expose him. And take for the also blood for the CBC okay. blood because we can uh, see. Okay. We should continue. Yeah. yeah. One. And I'll call the anesthesiologist for backup if needs. Dr. Nofer, the physiologist here. Dr. Nofer is here, he's an anesthetist as well. Yeah, he's okay. coming. And I'm going to the surgical victim. Yeah. So is the airway secure, Dr. Nofer? Okay, yes. Okay. What rhythm do we have, Dr. Sadiq? Let us go to check the rhythm. I'll put the pad yeah. here. This yeah. is manual pad and this is adhesive pad. The adhesive pad also doing the same thing. Yeah. Now the rhythm is we have a straight line. Okay. Now continue CPR while uh, uh, yeah, CPR. Yeah, yeah. Now this is a this is a VF. Okay. So this struggle with so I'm going to continue CPR and also charging the uh, defibrillator. Uh, okay. I'll, uh, Dr. Sidi, can you put the pads on? Okay. What we have now? Now it is the shock algorithm. I'm yeah. going to charge the ma machine to 150 joule, non-synchronized. Okay. And it is charged. I deliver. Now the shock is delivered. Please continue CPR. Okay. And we are going to check the vision for the next two minutes. Well, we are going to check for the reversible causes. Okay. Now the hypoxia oxygen is running. The hypovolemia, we have two cannula. Fluid is running also. 
the hypothermia out of our temperature, there is the skin warmness, warm. warm. And uh, let us check for the hypokalemia and hyperkalemia. Please uh, send blood for VVG. Okay? Okay. And so last two minutes done. Is fast. We are going to check the victim again. Part of the same place, one of the sternum and one of the apex bead. And as you check the rhythm, what can you see? Now we have well recognized the rhythm. Please check the pulse, pulse is present or not. Okay. When you check the pulse, there is no pulse. So no this pulse. pulse less electrical activity. This is non shockable continuous CPR. And please, Dr. Firas, uh, prepare one milligram, one to 10,000 adrenaline okay. and push bolus. <coughs> And after three and to five, five minutes. And six. Okay. And seven. So you are going to check the rhythm eight. again after two minutes. Okay. Okay. Still not two minutes yet, sir, Dr. Sam. Okay. So two continue. minutes now. No? Not yet. Okay. Sure. So okay. what about the results of the lab? So how many reversible causes we've done? Okay, the hypoxia, the oxygen is running for hypovolemia, fluid is running. The patient is not hypothermic. Uh, Hypothermic, we are going to wait for the potassium and also glucose. Glucose is important. Yes. Now for T, we should also send for the 12 lead ECG to see. This is most likely could be coronary thrombosis. Yeah. So you are going to do also. Uh, is that okay? Yes. yes. Two minutes now. Now two minutes passed. We are going to check the rhythm. And what is the rhythm when you, now? When you check the rhythm, there is some electrical activity there. And check the pulse please, there is well organized rhythm. When you check the pulse, there is a pulse. Okay, good. Excellent team, we achieved uh, ROSC. Now we are going to do post-ROSC uh, algorithm. We are starting <coughs> by A. This erythrol is available, we are going to intubate the patient. And for the breathing, we are going to satisfy by... So the patient is still, yes. not, the patient is still making very mi minimal respiratory effort, but he's got uh, basically some pulse um, and blood pr um, some electrical activity and he started just about to make some minimal respiratory effort. What do we do now? Okay, we are going to check the uh, respiratory rate. What about the respiratory rate? And so are going respiratory to rate is just coming to about six or seven. Okay, still the patient need in arrest, need ventilation by ambu bagging until the anesthetologist came and do definitive intubation of the patient. And the aim is to do PACO2 within a normal uh, level. And also, what about the glucose? We are going to do glycemic. And for circulation, is there any results of toxicology? So you, potassium and, um, is normal, and the electrolyte is normal. OK. OK, in this case, most likely, we are going to do 12 lead ECG. Good. If there is ST elevation, we are going to activate the lab card and also CCU involved in cardiologists, the patient may need angioplasty or peritonis intervention. And Kakahama, he started uh, breathing normally in his opening eye. And he said, Can you sit me up? Okay, Kakahama, Choni, you stand. Bashtri. Dr. Janot, Shibu. I was. We stop here. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Just, just, just to let you know, uh, the golden point and resuscitation don't interrupt any kind of uh, movement until five cycle, 32 to 32 to 32, 32, within two minutes. And uh, the hand uh, position no. between us. Let them uh, give the feedback. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so from our point of view, you've seen the scenario. In the situations like this, we will see a deteriorating patient. If you are in the emergency department, you will see someone coming and presenting like this. So your idea is to do ABCD approach as an assessment. So what do you think, how did this demonstration went? What do you think, what are the good things about this scenario? What do you think Dr. Aziz did very well today? Dr. Aziz was calm and he assessed properly. Uh, although uh, before the patient collapsed, uh, uh, SCO2 was not checked. Uh, but good. Uh, he called for help and uh, Good. I took the leadership of the scenario. Good. 
So, um, as you said, there is a lot of positive points. So, Dr. Aziz, he wanted to assess the patient. He wanted to do the A, B, C, D approach. He might have missed an area which was deliberately we did, so that we'll see if you have actually. So, you said he didn't check the saturation, which is the B. He went into the C, he takes some blood. But then at the time, what's happened? How did Dr. Aziz do when the patients become unresponsive? What did Dr. Aziz do when the patients become unresponsive? Before that? What did he do? He checked what? He assessed the patient if he's still. Yeah, is he still responsive or not? What did he do? He actively <coughs> lifted the chin and assess for 10 seconds. Yeah? Okay, so that's a very good thing from Dr. Aziz. What other good things that you've noticed throughout all the discussions that we had, we, the discussion we did? So the team went, so you called for help and you asked someone, so actually, can you uh, call 222 or ask her, so you called for him because he, don't, he can't do it on his own. And okay, so we went through the algorithm. Did you recognize his shockable and non shockable side of the rhythm? Then Dr. Sadiqi came and he was in charge of the cardioversion side. Did Dr. Sadiqi recognize the, charge of the shockable and non shockable side of the rhythm? Yeah? Yeah? So that's not a good thing. What other things that you think we should have done and we haven't done? Uh, the demonstration could be more realistic. Okay. We are doing the CPR to be more realistic. Okay. So you think the CPR was not effective? Yes. Excellent. Still. No. Yes. Still, yeah? yeah. That's slow. Yes. And we did that <coughs> because we wanted you to see if it was actually, I would do it this yeah. way. Yeah? So that wasn't very good. What else do you think we could have improved? Okay. So one third versus lower one third. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. What about uh, what about the camera? He is get anxious and agitated, and the reflexes is there and difficult to achieve. What we gonna get? A sedation. Yes. So we probably will ask for some sort of a advanced support from a critical care or intensivist to come and help to to basically stabilize the patient. But we basically that is if he become after resuscitation restless and yeah. So other things? And the CPR performer was not regularly uh, shifted. Yes, Sorry. The whole demonstration is good, but I've got two things going for it. Good. I've got the, the starting, the, the police, the acting as a leader, the little one. Right. Well, well, very good. <laughs> well done. That's, that's good. good. That's the very first point. Excellent. The second point is, uh, they didn't change the rules. The only one who gives the compression is the police. Yes. They're very mean, they are. Very mean to me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and no fun. he stepped back and he didn't take the airway as he was supposed to. And that's quite, actually, we wanted you to know this. In a, in a real scenario, we could actually show you uh, in an active resuscitation things, is the, the team leader, as I showed him, could just step back. And there will be too many leaders talking to each other, then it will actually mess up the things. Right. I'll step back, I'll get information from you. You do that version, you're in charge of this one, okay? If I'm not sure, what do you think, guys? I think I'm not sure about this rhythm. What do you, what do you think? Is it shockable or not shockable? Then you can ask, but the team leader is, it's, is a kind of a taking and getting information. And I think you have identified a lot of positive points in there, okay? Also, another point, although the patient was unconscious, but the doctor did not use basic airway agents. But that is fine. Uh, we don't we compromise on this one as long as you can use bag and mass ventilation oxygen. When we check for the hatches and 40s, you actively ask, are you happy with your airway? Can you ventilate the patient? It doesn't matter. I sometimes uh, bag the patients. If I know that I fit, if I can do that, that's better than actually not trying to put a good air, uh, uh, supraglottic device or try to intubate the patient. You cause bleeding inside, then you cause airway obstruction. So it's a kind of a is something what you are competent in. And today we will actually teach you how to be able to use basic airway maneuver and also to practice <coughs> some sort of more advanced airway technique, which is Dr. the Sleek is going to do that for you today. Okay? Okay. That's a good point, but I guess. Yes.
after the boat came back, the president is this very low. Okay, so that's why what we will do is, when resuscitation happens, we need to go back to an ABCD approach, reassess the patient. So we'll do a more thorough reassessment. We'll see during chest compression, the patient might develop neothorax because of the chest compression, or it could be a primary problem, or we might have done chest comp decompression, but that's not actually the definitive treatments. We need to do a proper chest chest training and stuff like that. So it's as, as actually, it's not just there, it's just to stabilize the patient, retain spontaneous circulation, then we will do further uh, assessment to what do we do to stabilize, to minimize secondary damage, which is what we will do. The whole idea is your job is not stop there. We need to continue to do that and then get critical care and more. I know you've got lots of involvement, I know everyone, all of you are very enthusiastic, but the whole idea we wanted to show you in a scenario, it does happen like this. It's a, it's a high fidelity case scenario, it's not going to be exactly the same, again, but it's actually in reality, if you look. We sometimes get, get called 6 o'clock in the morning when the ward changed, the nursing shift changed, the patient's already basically arrested maybe 20 minutes before when we go to the patient. They, we get an arrest call and we go and start doing CPR. And then you go to a situation where you haven't seen that deterioration, but you could be in a &E and you see a deteriorating patient. So it could be in a very position. In either way, you need to check if it's a cardiac arrest or not when you take over, when you take the team lead role. Okay? Thank you very much. Do you guys do you have any, 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 any other comments? Yes. Yeah. Would you think his blood pressure is going to be very high in a situation like this? Hypertensive, but it's controlled. Yes, yeah, it's very important. Yes. Yes. To our reality. So that's why Dr. Nofen, he, uh, uh, he wanted to say something very useful. So when you do five cycles of 30 to 2, that's equivalent to what? Two minutes. Two minutes. And uh, let me just explain to you. Most of these monitors nowadays, they are equipped, they have a timer on them. You need to check. When you start the CPU, it's actually start the countdown timer in there, and it's actually keep you in time. But the main important thing is the two is a surrogate for in, in situations where it's actually very difficult. But from your point of view, we mentioned what do we do, need to do is effective CPR. We need to do effective chest compression. And we will do surrogate. If the situation is not ideal, then we do. It's five, five to two, five cycles. Then we will think, OK, yeah, that could be around two minutes. And then we will do that one. So these are things that are written in for you to make people, like in a hospital setting, you would be able to do that. But if you're outside hospital setting, you try to use surrogate measures. My question was time. Yes, yes, I, uh, yes you are right. It's mm. a very good important point. I, I'll support you because usually there should be a scribe nurse. The job of the scribe nurse doing just timing documentation according to the checklist. Every two minutes check the uh, rhythm, and every three to five minutes pushing adrenaline. There should be a scribe, a C R I B E nurse or any person we are going to document all the things, all the drugs, all the findings according to the order of the team leader and also the, the scribe person will manage the time. This was your point, okay? Any other point, Mohamed? Uh, sorry, but just yes. for this point, in so, district hospitals, usually you don't have the human resources that you need as a team. But what you can do from each shift, mm -hmm. you can use two or three nurses, the active one, give them some basic instructions, and they, they will be your team. You can depend on them. You basically need to educate. That's the algorithm for every shift. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's just a kind of a... Two, three active ones. 
just give them some instructions, and if you have such a problem, you can always. And that's why in, in the UK we train all the nurses, any nurses who actually do war duties, they should have done their ALS or at least ILS, intermediate life support. Because with this one, they have tests, we test them. There is a test in the final and they need to pass the test. There's a theory test and a practical test. And some nurses that are a bit terrified of tests, obviously. But there is intermediate life support, but they still do these skills, but there is no test about it. But it's all about being able to be aware about this. So that's why I think it's a very important to have that manpower to help you. But sometimes you have to be really direct with your people. Just tell them, can you do it this way? I'm not happy with your chest compression. And I do that to tell. I said, your chest compression is not right. Mm -hmm. And I do say that to people when I'm mm -hmm. there. Uh, okay. okay in case, uh, I th that's the last one, because we need to, I think it's a lunch break after this? No. 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 <laughs> oh, there's something you're angry. Just angry. Just angry. <laughs> Like, just ask the question, maybe. Okay. That's yeah. 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 Uh, in case uh, of electrolyte disturbance, uh, we check the potassium level. Let's say before the result came back, uh, there's universal D wave, uh, peak D wave, you know? Mm -hmm. In that case, um, the patient is at rest. Shall we assume it is to be no. hyperkalemic? <coughs> no, because in cardiac arrest situation, there is a lot of metabolic derangements. Mm -hmm. There is acidosis, high lactate, there's derangement. Yeah. Unless we have evidence in numbers, ECG sometimes can be um, deceiving at the beginning. Unless we have numbers, then we can link it with the ECG itself. Because I faced that situation uh, yes. one time. I had a case that was very fun and then it went into arrest. Uh, I, I looked at the ECG before yeah, it was if that is, Yes, if that one, if you could, if the patient was not in arrest prior to that, that's a different situation. But if it was in, he was in arrest already, and then you do an ECG and you saw just the ECG based on that one, possibly sometimes it can be deceiving because the heart has already went through a phase of injury. And then we might get a variable, a variety of arrhythmias it can be dis difficult to distinguish. What you need to do is you, you marry that finding with an, an, a blood gas which show might be hyperkalemia and then you'll say actually that's least too good so we need to give it we need to give it and that's what we do it's very difficult in a cardiac arrest situation when I do cardiac arrest they don't return spontaneous circulation and they're still in shockable rhythm and when you send the blood gas it will take about two to three minutes in my place 